Good morning, everybody, and welcome back to your favorite weekly horoscope, this time for October 31st through November 6th of 2022. My name is Cam White. Today, you can call me father. Uh, anyway, we have a lot going on this week. You know, I usually always forget about talking about holidays on my weekly horoscope, so I figured I'd have a little bit of fun because I actually have a costume this time. But anyway, this week... Look at this. Venus conjoins the south node. Venus goes opposite Uranus. The sun conjoins the south node. Venus squares Saturn and Mercury conjoins the south node. By the way, this is happening all in between eclipses. So if I can just give you a quick rundown of what this week is. For one, we're in between eclipses, so everything's still wild and crazy, right? We're in, in between worlds at this moment, so to say. Uh, but this is a purging week. This is a lot about purging, getting rid of things, draining, exhausting, the, the skeletons in your closet are coming alive, and they're walking out and exposing themselves to everybody. Uh, this week is highlighted by, I mean, Venus conjoins the south node is just a lot of grossness. Venus opposite Uranus is like, you know, I have to pause and say, last week I talked a lot about poop, and it's amazing how many comments I got about how relevant poop was to Tuesday. So, if you're interested, go back to my last weekly horoscope and click on the newest comments and look at how many people had to deal with like poop related activities. It was really funny. More poop. Lots more poop coming up this week. Um, I think that's pretty much the easiest way to say it. But um, a lot of this is draining and purging, but this is like good. This is, you know, the Scorpio stuff is about holding on to things and letting go of things. Um, I've used this analogy before, but here in Denver, the sun went into Scorpio and it was like all of the leaves fell and it instantly became like much colder, right? And when you get to fall, all of the plants let go of their leaves, right? They kill all of their leaves off in order to uh, maintain their energy and they root it into their, you know, uh, whatever you want to call it, trunk or their roots or whatever. But plants, they have to kill off all of their leaves in order to survive the winter. What do you have to kill off? Because that's what this week is really about. So let's go ahead and get started. Uh, Monday, we start the day off with the moon ingressing into Aquarius, and it's going to make a square to Mercury. Um, <laughs> I don't like the Aquarius Scorpio stuff. I mean, I don't think that's going to be shocking to anybody listening to this. But the reason I bring this up is, you know, as the moon goes into Aquarius, we're much more focused on the collective community, ideals, you know, it's like the moon in Aquarius is very similar to the moon in Capricorn where there's sort of this detached feeling. The moon in Capricorn is like emotionally detached from like your emotions versus the moon in Aquarius is like, you know, the Aquarius stuff is very like, let we care about humanity, but we don't care about the individual, right? It's like, you know, well, what's interesting is when you talk about what the past two years have been, it's been this one size fits all kind of similar to this costume I have. Um, it's one size fits all for everybody. You're not a unique individual. You don't have an individual, you know, you know, all day long, we're taught that our bodies are different and that each soul is different. But then you have mandates and, you know, laws that treat, treat everyone as if they're all the same. And it's really interesting. Being a human being means that you have to be um, hypocritical. You're going to, you know, have things that make sense in one way, but go against the belief in another way. And a moon in Aquarius moment is really like, you know, there is the sense that we are all equal in one sense. I mean, we're all equal under the law, but our bodies are not all equal. Our opinions are not all equal. The way that, you know, um, our, our, our opportunities aren't all equal, right? And I bring this up because the moon is going to make a square to Mercury. So as the moon's in Aquarius, we're much more focused on, you know, how do we make everything even? How do we make everything make sense? And sometimes you have to kind of blanket statement everything to kind of make it make sense. I think as the moon's in Aquarius, this is going to be kind of a rough couple of days. This is a rough eclipse season. Um, but there is this kind of focus on ideas, solutions. Again, it's like moon and Aquarius is like, well, if everyone just wore, you know, a, a mask, this would all get stopped. If everyone just did the same thing, and if everyone just fell in line, it would work. But we all know that didn't work. And the moon's going to square Mercury here, where Mercury and Scorpio is kind of like, you know, um, I'm sure some of you are kind of annoyed at like my uh, COVID opinions, but this moon square Mercury is like the other day on Twitter and Twitter is just the the worst of the worst. But the moon square Mercury is like I, the other day on Twitter, I saw that someone, what was trending was bring masks back. And, you know, no one's stopping you from wearing a mask. You're totally allowed to wear three, four masks if you want to. 
but to bring them back, that's kind of like, um, it's been a couple years. We don't need to do that. And this moon in Aquarius scoring Mercury and Scorpio is very like, someone being like, we should bring back masks. And Mercury and Scorpio is like, no, <laughs> what? It's like, stop. We are clearly in the Scorpio stuff. There's a lot of resentment. There's a lot of pain. And I think with Mercury and Scorpio, we're really focused on the truth. And, you know, what I say the truth is like Mercury and Scorpio is not like the holier than thou truth, but Mercury and Scorpio is like, what is, where, where am I being deceived? Where am I being lied to? Where, what is going on behind closed doors that I'm not aware of? Mercury and Scorpio is looking for, you know, security breaches. Mercury and Scorpio is looking for the uh, hidden intentions, right? Sometimes we operate in this world idealistically, like everyone is good and everyone's, a, you know, um, doing things for the best. But oftentimes, and often time, often times, yeah, often times, that doesn't sound right, but whatever. Uh, people have hidden intentions. People have hidden agendas. Scorpio, you know, um, I, I did an interview with Gordon White on my podcast. And one of my favorite quotes from him from a, a podcast he did was like, Scorpio is real. And people like to think that, you know, there aren't dark hidden agendas that are going on behind closed doors without your your acknowledgement. But Scorpio is a real sign, and that's what it that's what it symbolizes, right? Pluto is a real thing. Pluto represents the powers that be that control the underworld that you don't see, right? And we love to say, especially in society nowadays, that that's all conspiracy and that's all, you know, you're just a conspiracy theorist. But it's literally real. It's literally baked into our like cosmology. Cosmology? Yeah. Why doesn't that not sound right? Anyway. The moon's going to square Mercury and Scorpio. Look for hidden intentions. Moon and Aquarius squaring Mercury and Scorpio too is same thing with moon and, moon and Aquarius. Oh, you know, just for, for example, um, the digital ID and the vaccine passports. That was not to protect you. That did nothing to protect you. What that did was normalize the idea that your phone can track your health status and to normalize showing a passport to go everywhere. That had nothing to do with health. And that's really important to understand. And now that's, you know, I'm talking about like the, the, the political thing that's kind of going on right now. But the reason I'm bringing this up is in your personal life, where is this kind of feeling of feeling like you have to fall in line and it's, it's moon and Aquarius. You know, if we all just, you know, stopped eating meat, the planet would get saved. That's an ideal that doesn't make sense and it's not going to work. In fact, it would actually kill more people than anything. Um, but this Mercury and Scorpio stuff, like the moon squaring Mercury is, you have to understand there are hidden agendas. And my task for you guys on Monday is look at the deeper truth. What is actually going on? Because all of this Scorpio stuff, it's kind of old at this point, right? And the thing is the moon's in Aquarius squaring Mercury. It ain't going anywhere. You know what I mean? Pretty much people are fixed in their opinions right now. And it's not going to change that much. And that's just how it is right now. That's not to say it's going to be like that forever, but that's how it is right now. So I think on Monday, it's going to be a very frustrating day. It's going to feel like you're going nowhere fast and it's going to feel um, frustrating. Uh, and I think there's also this uh, cynicism. There is this uh, deceit that is at play. And I think it's going to be important to acknowledge that. So like on Monday, if you're feeling frustrated, if you're just like feeling, you know, jaded from everything, this is why. And I think the biggest thing is to not let yourself like, you know, moon and Aquarius is very like, find your community, find the people that you can relate to and find comfort and security with. But also like, it's pretty like, this is all fixed sign stuff. Like it's very real. It's very raw. And there's no need to like, like the way I would look at this is just, um, it's going to be a little rough. There's going to be this sort of, when you have fixed signs squaring each other, it's going nowhere fast. It's two people arguing, which aren't going to change their opinion. So, you know, don't overwhelm yourself with energy, right? Like if you're like, if you have someone who's not going to change their opinion, you can't fix and change people. So stop trying to do that. Just live your life. Right. But just know, and this is why I'm trying to say this, like Mercury and Scorpio is like, well, what if I, you know, pinpoint every little flaw in their stuff. Like people like the Saturn Aquarius stuff is you can show them actual evidence that these things didn't work, actual evidence that this actually caused more harm than good, but they don't care. They're not going to change their mind. So why stop wasting your energy and your time? <laughs> and this is advice for myself, by the way, but on Monday, it's going to be pretty frustrating. On Tuesday, the moon will then square Uranus and conjoin Saturn. We have more of this energy coming up. The moon is going to first square Uranus. So I think as the moon's in Aquarius too, when our emotions are really attached to society, to humanity at whole, um, 
it's going to square Uranus and Taurus where there is this upheaval. There is this randomness. There is this, uh, what's the word I'm looking for here? There is this uh, instability that comes about. And, you know, uh, for example, uh, in China, they just did another lockdown in Wuhan, which is very Saturn Uranus square. Again, the Saturn Uranus square last, I believe in January was uh, Shanghai being locked down. And, you know, I, I tweeted about this, but a lot of people think that inflation is due to corporate like price gouging. What? Not, and it has nothing to do with the trillions of dollars that were injected into the economy that were printed out of thin air. But a lot of the inflation that you see right now is supply chain crisis. And this isn't just, you know, me doing economics. This is baked into the astrology. In, 19, in the 1970s, when we had stagflation, when we had an oil crisis, when we had an Iranian revolution, it's kind of interesting how history repeats itself. It was a Saturn Uranus square. There was lines for oil. And if you're a young person like me and you don't know what was going on in the 70s, there was a huge oil crisis and there was stagflation, which was meaning the economy was stagnant, but uh, prices were still going up. And you see that same marker here today, Saturn square Uranus. And so when the moon conjoin, uh, the moon squares Uranus and then conjoins Saturn, I want you to think about like supply chain crisis, but in your own life, right? Like Saturn is where, where you need to be, you know, disciplined and responsible and dutiful. And as it squares Uranus, there's this kind of like, um, you know, trying to get a hold of everything, trying to get these systems in place, Saturn rules systems. But there's a lot of unpredictability. There's a lot of instability going on right now, especially related to Taurus things, goods, um, food, um, you know, valuables, money even. And so the moon's going to square Uranus. And I look at it as um, I'm a big Milton Friedman kind of person. Like the freedom of freedom of choice is the most important thing that you can really have. And so this moon in Aquarius conjoining Saturn is like the more you try to control a situation and control people, the more they're going to push back on things. And so in your personal life on Tuesday, the more that you try to control a situation and that you try to you know, implement some type of authoritarian, like, you know, literally control over the situation as if you have control, the more instability that you're going to have. So the way I look at this is as the moon squares Uranus, there's going to be instability. That's just how it goes. And it's going to square Saturn. You're just, it's one of those things where if, you know, especially if you own a business where you sell product, especially that's manufactured in China, over this past year, there was just shit that you couldn't do. There was just, it was just out of your control. And that's where I would really say on Tuesdays, like you kind of have to surrender to some stuff. And what I mean surrender is not give up, but just like, hey, it's out of your hands. You got to give it to God. And the other thing is, is that this is the halfway point of this total lunar eclipse that we have next week. The moon is now, you know, um, waxing and it's at this quarter moon phase and it's going to start, you know, culminating into this total lunar eclipse. As the moon conjoins Saturn, there is this feeling of restriction. There is this feeling of Saturn and Aquarius, like even if you wanted to, you, there is a, you know, I've been making fun of the Leo risings because the Leo risings have just been like so single or just have been, had such challenges in relationships. You know, Saturn is like this wall and this barrier, but in Aquarius, it's this mental wall. And I always make fun of like so many of my Leo uh, rising clients have these issues with relationships where it's like this big barrier. It's like a glass wall with relationships where there, someone might be there, but there's some barrier in between. And as the moon conjoins Saturn, you're going to feel that barrier. It's like even if you try all and you put all of your energy into doing something, there's just something that's going to get in the way. And the way I would look at this is do what you can, right? Like, for example, when the lockdowns happened, you couldn't go out. Well, at least if you were in Los Angeles, you couldn't go to the beach. You couldn't do this or that. But what can you do, right? You don't want to waste time. You want to put the power on your hands. But, and you can't just say, well, everything's locked down. I can't do nothing. Find something that you can do, but just surrender to the fact that you're not going to be able to do everything that you want to do. And it is going to be a little instable, but I would suggest that if you're going to try to control the situation, it's not going to work out that good for you. I would really surrender that control and it will just be at least a lot less frustrating when that happens. We get into Wednesday. Wednesday's got a lot going on. The moon's going to make a trine to Mars. Then it's going to enter Pisces. Then it's going to try and Mercury and Venus will conjoin the South Node. So there's a lot to talk about here. First, the moon will make this trine to Mars and Gemini. Mars is retrograde. Also, pay attention to this. Look how much stuff we have in Mars ruled sign, right? I mean, Jupiter just left a Mars ruled sign, but look at all the stuff that we have in this Mars ruled sign of Scorpio. And now the ruler of the sun, Mercury, uh, Venus in the south node is retrograde. As the moon is at the end degrees of Aquarius trining Mars, 
you have to think outside the box, right? Mars retrograde in Gemini. Now that Mars is retrograde, it's like, all right, let's rethink our plans. Let's re let's re-strategize. We have new information, so we have to change our actions based off that. And I think as the moon's in Aquarius, this allows us to think outside the box, right? So I like that. The moon will then go into Pisces and it will start to trine Mercury. I actually really do like that. I believe as the moon goes into Pisces and our emotions are kind of all over the place. Pisces is very, uh, and I talk about this a lot, the moon in Pisces has to deal with its environment, right? Like a moon in Pisces, like um, if you are in a, like the moon in Pisces, like if you were in a field with deer and rabbits, you're feeling at peace and a joy. But if you're at like a metal concert and like there's drugs and alcohol, it's like super intense and crazy. Like the moon, it, the moon in Pisces is very susceptible to its environment. The moon in Pisces is also time to like tap into our emotions, but in that Pisces way where it's like we have to think of, um, you know, if you want to look at the archetypes of the zodiac signs, Capricorn is like we build the walls, right? Aquarius is there is now an intellectual divide. There is a um, Aquarius is all about outcasting, right? Let's say we're back in our hunter gatherer tribes and you just got outcasted of, of your village. You are now pushed out of the village and you're on your own. That's the Aquarius stuff. But the Pisces part is where, you know, and I've talked about this before. You can't just sit in agony. There has to be some kind of, you know, <laughs> for example, when the lockdowns happened, some, one of the funniest things about the lockdowns to me was when it was like a month after the lockdowns happened, all you saw on the news was like, nature is healing. People are break, uh, baking bread. And that's kind of like the moon in Pisces where it's like, all right, we're over here. We might as well enjoy ourselves and try to not think about this situation uh, rather than just sulking in it. And this, as the moon goes into Pisces, it's trying to think of a better way of thinking or like moon in Pisces, you just thinking about all of your bullshit is not going to help you. How can you be more like, um, like Jesus? I'm, so, I'm making so many God and Jesus uh, analogies today. I love it. But the moon in Pisces is like, you have to get into your higher mind. You have to get into, you have to get in touch with God. And we all are parts of God, right? God created us like as a part of him, get in touch with that side. And as the moon starts to try and Mercury and Scorpio, there is a level of depth that you can get to on a spiritual level, right? Like for those that do a lot of deep meditation, that do a lot of deep work, it takes this spiritual Piscean, you know, ability to get out of your body, get out of your mind. And as the moon shines Mercury and Scorpio, there's this truth that gets revealed. And it's one of those things like Mercury and Scorpio is like, you know, Mercury and Scorpio is really cynical. Like, I know you're lying. I know you're deceiving me. But the moon in Pisces shining Mercury is like, that's fine. Don't worry about that, right? And I think that kind of gives Mercury and Scorpio a little bit uh, of like the edge kind of comes off Mercury and Scorpio where it's like, as long as you can get validated that that's happening, you don't have to like force the truth out, right? So Wednesday seems a lot more calm. The only other thing though, is that Venus is gonna conjoin the South Node. This is, you know, I personally love the South Node simply because, uh, well, I have Saturn on the South Node, but I like... I, well, I just love astrology and I love life and I love how, you know, cyclical everything is. But the South Node is about letting go of stuff. And I and I I don't want to say I've been looking forward to the South Node in Scorpio, but there's something, in my opinion, you know, prophetic about the South Node in Scorpio. Like Scorpio is about holding on to things and it can hold on so tight, but you have to let some stuff go. And as Venus, value, desire, pleasure it's in Scorpio. We're desiring um, things that maybe we don't want. We're desiring, and, and also Venus and Scorpio, we're finding pleasure going without the things that we want. Personally, for me, I'm on day four of quitting weed. No no cigs. I quit cigarettes. I, I picked up cigarettes like for two months when Mars squared Saturn. It was awful. Quit that. I'm like completely sober right now. And I mean, like I'm an addict. Like I really struggle with this stuff and I feel really good, but I'm fucking trying to do the astrology thing that the stars are telling me to do. And Venus conjoining the South Node is like, there's got to be this purging effect, right? There's got to be this, you know, especially Venus on the South Node is so like, you know, I don't like to use the word karmic, but sometimes things have to happen in order for things to move forward, right? Like Ven the South Node is oftentimes like the past and oftentimes an event can happen in your life. Let's say an event happens in your life today and you can think, oh my God, this, this is so bad. But as you go into the future, you'll reflect and look back at that moment and say, that was a moment in my past that had to happen to take me to the future I wanted to. 
And that's what a lot of Venus on the South Node is. Venus is love, romance, sex. It's in Scorpio. There's this, you know, guilt. There's this shame. There's this, you know, ugliness to it. And there's this kind of like holding on to things that you know aren't good. When is it like, is it time to like, aren't you over this? You know what I mean? Have you ever... You know, like, I, you know, that's something that comes up in relationships a lot. So many people want to hold on to something that they know isn't good. You know, I was making, I, I had a client the, the the other week with Venus and Scorpio. We were talking about like, it's so easy to hold on to things that aren't good for you. It's like, this might be shit, but it's my shit. And that possession, I think, is part of the problem. But I think as Venus conjoins the South Node, it's not fun anymore. Like, sometimes it hurts to hold on to things. It's like, you know, if you're holding on to a rope, you're getting that rope burn. And it's going to harm you more than it's going to help you. And I think as Venus conjoins the South Node, there is this sense of letting go of pleasure, letting go of want, letting go of desire, right? Desire, I, I'm in the camp that like, I think Venus and Jupiter oftentimes are bad because when we are when we live in a society that is all about pleasure and reward, you know, uh, desire this, desire that, sex, drugs, food, money, all of this stuff, like none of that's actually good versus we need more Mars and Saturn stuff. Most of you need to be more disciplined. You know, uh, I love astrologers that love to say like Mars remediation, but you know, they don't know how to stand up for themselves. They don't know how to fight a conflict. They don't know, you know, the same thing with like Mars remediation is like eat some meat, kill something. And when I say kill something, I'm, I'm not saying kill people, but like, you know, there's Mars is like energy and you have to transfer that energy and just it, it, people are so passive in society right now that you, you can't say that Mars is like a real thing. Like that people are leaning into. And so what I'm trying to sit here and say is as Venus is on the South node, like get rid of your desires, you know? Anyway, let's move on. Cause I can keep going about that for a long time. We get to Thursday, the moon shrines Venus and will sextile Uranus. I like this. This is a good follow-up because as the moon shrines Venus, there is this sense of the moon in Pisces is very open-minded. The moon in Pisces is very, again, adaptable where, I think as the moon shines Venus, there is the sense of like, oh, I actually don't, I didn't like that. Now that I've purged it out, now that I've let it go, I've realized I didn't like that. That didn't serve me. And I'm enjoying this process. I mean, like the moon in Pisces is very like, again, being in that spiritual state, being in that higher mind state. And I think as the moon shines Venus and Scorpio, it's like, for example, like celibacy. I talk a lot about Venus and Scorpio being celibate. And the moon in Pisces is like, there is a peace in that. There is a spiritual side to that, right? Uh, holding in your energy and not like just dispensing it everywhere is good. And so I think on Thursday, there is this enjoyable uh, process to this purging part, right? Like fasting. Like if you've ever fasted before, like there's going to be moments where like if you're on like day two of like fasting, you might be like, man, I'm hungry. But like day three, day four, you're on cloud nine. And that's kind of what this is like. It's like, hey, going without something might even be better for you. You might be able to think a little bit clearer. Maybe fasting would be a good thing on Thursday. Uh, and then the moon also sex tells Uranus too, which kind of plays into the fasting part. But this is some kind of doing something different. There is this kind of innovative, you know, um, like the moon sex telling Uranus is like, oh, here's an interesting solution to my problems. Oh, here's something that was a little bit random and kind of destabilizing. Like if you've ever done a fast, it kind of, it doesn't really throw off your schedule, but it's different and it can provide a solution. And I think also on Thursday, Thursday is going to be important for what the total lunar eclipse is next week. So pay attention to Thursday. But I like this. This seems much more accepting of what you have to do. Then we get to Friday. The moon will conjoin Neptune. It will then square Mars. It will then conjoin Jupiter. And then it will enter Aries, which is quite a bit going on. So first, the moon will conjoin Neptune. A little all over the place, a little overwhelming, like, you know, also too, sometimes when you fast, it's like, I remember sometimes when I fast, I can smell food from like a mile away and I can tell you exactly what it is too. And the moon conjoining Neptune's a little delusional, a little bit. It's not the worst thing, but I think as the, usually I'm super much, I'm much more harsh on Neptune and I'm about to be in a second. But when you have all this water stuff going on, it's like you got all this Pisces stuff training Scorpio. Maybe this is good. The moon's going to be conjoining Neptune. Again, fogginess, illusion, deceit, a lot of deception going on here, which again, I don't know if you've paid attention to the news lately. It's almost like the, the that New York court just said that the, um, well, I also have to be a little bit more careful. I just got censored on YouTube. Uh, my Patreon monthly overview uh, got 
uh, deleted, but it got reinstated because I appealed it. So I have to watch my tone a little bit because I don't want to lose my YouTube, which is bullshit. But anyway, uh, <laughs> the New York court said that that thing that everyone was mandated to get to protect others actually doesn't protect other people because it doesn't stop the spread. So um, do with that what you will. But the moon's going to conjoin Neptune and then square Mars. This is the, it, and, and I brought that part up for this reason because. The moon conjoining Neptune, squaring Mars. We have Jupiter conjoining Neptune. All of this shit that has been deceitful and lies is really not going to work anymore when it squares Mars. It's like, oh, wait, what? Wait, that didn't work? Wait, uh, young people are dying at unprecedented rates? What? Children are have mitocarditis now? It's and, and you can look at what's going on in the real world and apply this to your personal life. Where is this? you know, illusion fantasy stuff starting to like actually make a little bit of not sense, but like, where is that fog starting to be lifted? And oftentimes when the fog's lifted, you kind of go, Oh, I didn't realize this. I didn't realize that. And that's not necessarily good or bad. It just is. So the moon will conjoin Neptune where there's this kind of like, you're lost in the fog. It's going to square Mars where you go. I thought I was heading North, but I'm heading East. What's going on with that? And then the moon will conjoin Jupiter though. And I like the moon conjoining Jupiter because we're talking about truth here. We're talking about what is real. We're talking about our faith. And you know, there's a church down the street. I'm, I'm loving all these church God Jesus references I'm making, but there's a church down the street that has a, a, a marquee that says, it's like something looks, uh, anxiety looks behind, uh, no fear looks, or uh, something looks behind, anxiety looks around and faith looks forward. And so I want you to think, I don't remember what the last one is. If you know what the saying is, let me know in the comments. By the way, if you like this video, please give me a like. Comment in, comment in the comments just for the algorithm's sake if you want to support me. It really does support. I had a, Someone was like, the likes don't do anything. Yes, they do. I wouldn't tell you to do that if they didn't. But the moon conjoining Jupiter is like, faith looks forward. And there is this sense of like, all right, now that we have this information, what are we doing now? What are we moving forward into now? And then right after that, the moon moves into Aries which is not going to feel as exciting as the moon and Aries transits have been lately because now Jupiter's not there. But the moon and Aries is like direct action. What are we initiating? What are we starting? Our uh, The moon, our emotions are attached to our physical action, our energy. The only issue is Aries, the ruler of Aries, Mars is retrograde. This is not about, I'm starting this. I'm, I'm starting that. This is about starting the change like moon goes into aries mars is retrograde it's like okay this is what i need to change now based on this information this is what i have to change this is what i have to redo this is what i have to go backwards on right so saturday yes saturday venus goes opposite uranus sun conjoins the south node moon sextiles uranus um <laughs> i have a funny analogy in my head uh, I don't know if I want to say it or not because it's kind of funny, but um, yeah, let's talk about Venus opposite Uranus. So Venus opposite Uranus. What is in my head is I've told you guys about like the carnivore stuff that I've been doing. And when you go on the carnivore diet, there is a bout of diarrhea that you get. <laughs> and that's kind of like Venus. That's just what this kind of looks like to me is like Venus and Scorpio opposite Uranus and Taurus. There's some type of transition your you know venus's values and pleasures and and desires and it's in detriment and it's and it's literally opposite it's opposing this random stuff so it's like one of those things where you know um for example if maybe you don't typically eat you know thai food or whatever or spicy food and you go and eat spicy food you're gonna shit your brains out like venus opposite uranus is kind of like doing something <sighs> This is kind of a tough one, too, because this is like in between eclipses and we have all this stuff going on. But Venus and Scorpio, right? Pleasure, desire, it's in detriment. We like going without it. But opposite Uranus, this is kind of like a um, something we, we do something random that, you know, switches that over. Or like, for example, maybe <laughs> maybe you've never had a cigarette before. And if you've never had a cigarette before, I would not recommend trying one unless if you wanted to try one. If, if on Saturday, you're going to shit your brains out. Like, I don't know if you've ever tried a cigarette and never, like your cigarettes are, a, if you're a constipated, smoke a cigarette. You're going to not be constipated. Like within 30 seconds, you will not be constipated anymore. And that's what this kind of looks like. It's like, you know what? I will try a cigarette. And then you're at the club going, I have to go. <laughs> and then the sun's on the South Node too. Like the sun is our will. The sun is our the sun is our, you know, our, our ability to enforce that. And it's sun and Scorpio, right? We're a little bit more cynical. We're a little bit more pissed. 
and the sun can join the south node is like you have to let go of that control. Like control is an illusion. Control is not real. You are just a vessel, right? Like this is what I love about astrology because it's much more of a fate practice. You know, Western society has us in this illusion that we are that we have free will. And astrologers argue back and forth on this. And you might disagree with me on this, but just be open-minded to what I have to say here. I think free will is 1%, but fate is 99%. And I think as the sun conjoins the south node, this is not a day of like, I'm going to enforce my will onto whatever I'm doing. This is a day to go, you know what? What is to be is meant to, whatever is meant to be is to be. Or like, um, what's that saying? Where it's like, you just got to let go and let God. Let Jesus take the wheel. Man, I'm crushing these God analogies today. And I think that sun and Scorpio is like, I think when you let go of that desire, that let go of that need for control, I think you're going to find a lot more opportunities to have things change in your life. It just seems very sudden. It's like Venus and Scorpio opposite Uranus. You're like, you know what? I don't even want to fucking do this anymore. I'm, I'm going ghost or whatever if you're Danny Phantom people. The sun conjoining the south node is, I, I mean, this is a, a purging. This is a, a getting rid of the gunk of your, you know, ego if your ego is holding on to some truth, you need to get rid of that. You need to dump it now. You know, what was the other thing? What's the, what, else, what, else, what else was going on Saturday? Oh, and the moon sextile Saturn. I mean, the only thing here that I want to talk about is the moon's in Aries. Mars is retrograde, the ruler of the moon. So there is this sense of like, we have to do something different. This is not about, on some real shit, this is not about doing the same thing. You know, it's so funny to me about you know, the, uh, the boosters and the masks, it's literally the definition of psychosis. You, everyone is trying to do the same thing and expect a different result. <laughs> Stop doing that. Like if you're not getting the result that you want, maybe you need to change something. Shocker, right? But cause the thing, if, if, if you do the same thing, expecting a different result, you are going to literally lose your mind. I mean, that's general, but this is especially true for Saturday. You have to do something different. It is not easy to get out of your own way. All of this Scorpio stuff where it's like, we know what's right. I'm not changing our, our deep embedded programs. It's hard. It's not, none of this shit is easy, by the way. Like, I really hate talking about personal development. People are like, well, Cameron, that's really hard. And, you know, I just want life to be easy. Life is hard. Life sucks. It really does. Like, I think this idea that life is supposed to be beautiful and great, that is a choice that you make. I think the reality is you have to survive, you have to, and you have to do a lot of things that you probably don't want to do. But the question is, do you want to keep things to be the, do you want things to be the same or do you want something different? If you want something different, are you willing to get out of your comfort zone to do that? Because this is, we are out of our comfort zone on Saturday. We're not comfortable. None of this is comfortable. We're not going to be comfortable for a while. Like not even until like, <laughs> I mean, I think more comfortable ability will be, will happen when Venus goes into Sag, but this isn't comfortable. This isn't about being like cool and calm and collected. This is like, wow, I really need to let go of some shit. Wow. I really have to handle this. And I literally have to do something different. I don't have a choice. We get to Sunday. Moon is going to sextile Mars. Uh, and then it will enter Taurus, but that doesn't happen till later on. Mercury conjoins the South node. Venus squares Saturn. Venus square Saturn is typically the roughest transit we'll get. And I said this last year, but Venus in detriment, <laughs> squaring Saturn in domicile in the superior position, this is rough. There's a lot of rough shit. Sunday's pretty fucking rough. The first thing, let's let's just talk about Venus. Uh, well, the moon's going to sextile Mars. I mean, same shit, different day as far as like doing different things and changing our habits, routines, or, you know, Mars is retrograding Gemini. So we're getting new information and based off that information, we have to change what we do, Right. So the moon sex telling Mars is much more good for that. And then as the moon enters Taurus, then we get into total lunar eclipse time, which is something that we'll deal with on Monday. But Mercury conjoining the south node. Mercury in Scorpio is this fixated mindset, right? Looking underneath with all of this stuff. The only thing that I do like about this is I think as Mercury conjoins the south node, you don't need to know if someone's lying to you. Like they don't, you don't need to tell, like they don't need to tell you that they're lying to you in order for them to, for, in order for you to know. Like for, like this is what I love about intuition. You don't need confirmation. Like Mercury conjoining the South Node is like, you're never, like if someone's lying to you, you can't be like, you're lying to me and you need to confess it. They're never going to say that. 
And you need to make peace with that. And you need to like Mercury conjoining the South Node, like it is what it is. And I think as Mercury's in Scorpio, we're focused on the darkness, we're focused on cynicism, things that we can't see, things that are out of our control. And on the South Node, there is this kind of like holding on to that doesn't work. It's like, for example, you can know someone has bad intentions, but if you're like trying to focus on changing them and and, and you know reversing their course, you're going to going to get nowhere. Versus if you just know that they're lying and you just kind of ignore it and move on, that's what this is. Like Mercury conjoining the South Node is like, what good does it do for you to hold on to things mentally or to hold on to that cynicism? I'm not saying to not be cynical. I think cynical uh, cynicism, skepti uh, being skeptical, those are all good things. Everything is good in moderation. I think, and this isn't to say like, oh, Mercury and Scorpio on the South Node, stop distrusting people and just openly trust everybody. That's not what I'm saying. I think it's the opposite. I think, I think it's important to be, you know, skeptical. I think it's important to have distrust. I think it's important to question authorities. But the thing is, you've got to let go of how much that holds on to you. You have to let go of, and because it's just exhausting at this point. It's just like you know. You could see what's you could see the man behind the curtain and you can get upset about the man behind the curtain and try to tell everyone or you can just stop watching the show and do something else. Problem is Venus is going to be squaring Saturn. This is not good. In my opinion, Venus squaring Saturn is really 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 rough. It's not the worst thing ever, but it's rough because Venus is desires and pleasure and fun and she's already in detriment in Scorpio where it's like, well for example, <sighs> A good way to look at this is like, um, how would I actually explain this? Because it's like, you know, we're having more fun going without our desires. Well, this would be kind of like, um, for example, let's say you stop drinking alcohol. And when you stop drinking alcohol, your friendships are going to change. And, you know, maybe you're like, hey, I still want to hang out with my friends and, and be cool. I'm just not going to drink anymore. Venus and Scorpio squaring Saturn is like your friends find out like, oh, you don't drink anymore? Pfft, we're not going to hang out with you. And you're like, oh, you only liked me because I partied? Oh, that like our feelings are going to get hurt. Desire like Saturn authorities, um, restrictions, uh, you know, Venus is like our desire. Another thing I would look at for two Venus and Scorpio. This is on some real shit. Listen up Venus and Scorpio. If you are desiring something that you know, you shouldn't have. And you just say, you know, what? I'm just going to do it anyway. You're going to get fucked. Venus squaring, like Venus and Scorpio is like, for example, like some of you, like some people get off to like stealing things like petty, you know, crime, like just shoplifting. This is one of those things like, you know, um, I don't advocate for any of that. And I hope you guys don't steal in like also in my generation, people are like, it's okay to steal from Walmart. And it's okay. Yeah. I, I don't like corporations either, but it's much more of a personal thing. Like how can you have integrity with yourself? If you're just like making excuses as why it's okay to just steal. Who gives a fuck if it's Walmart? Why are you stealing? Why are you making excuses to be a fucking shithead? I don't get that. But Venus and Scorpio squaring Saturn is like, if you're like, oh, you know what? I'm going to steal because it's Walmart and it's a corporation and nothing matters. You're going to get caught. <laughs> like you're totally going to get caught. So this is a great day to not fall into false pleasures and false desires that you know aren't good. It's a really good day to restrain yourself. It's a really good day to not uh, lean into the desires and, I, and the other part of it is just, it's some rough truth. It's some, because you're, you're, you're not going to get your pleasure. You're not going to get off. You're not going to feel that desire. It's just not going to be there. And it's a real cold reality. It's like one of those things where, have you ever, like for me, quitting weed, um, I, well, for example, I used to be, I don't want to say a cocaine addict, but I used to do a lot of cocaine when I couldn't even afford it. And I still identify as like a coke head, like that energy, that stereotype, like, that's totally me. But I got to a point in my life where I was like, you know, like the idea of being coked out sounds wonderful. But just the reality of it, like, I, like the last time I did coke, it was just like, I don't even want to feel this way. Like, I love the idea of being yacked out and talking all night long and partying. But I didn't like the feeling. And the more I try to go in the, you know, uh, Wes Watson, I quote him all the time, but he talks about like, you know, when you go into the places to find love in the same place that you lose it, like you're fucking losing your mind. And this is like, stop going to the same place. Like, let's say if you go to booze and alcohol for, to make yourself feel good, but that's also where you lose, you know, self-respect and you lose self-love, like stop doing it. And this is one of those things, like, let's say you're an alcoholic. Um, and I don't, my whole fucking family's uh, of addicts. So there's no judgment here, but I'm just going to be real and raw with you guys. If you're like, 
depressed and you're like, I'm just going to go to booze to like solve all my issues. There's going to be this, like, if you do that on Sunday, you're going to be like, wow, this actually isn't solving my issues. And there's this kind of reality that, oh, I don't actually feel good. And now I'm just drunk. So I would really pay attention to like what your desires are and where you try to get this pleasure because it's not going to happen on Sunday. I think the way to do it is strength through restraint. Go without your desire. Try to have some self-discipline. That's the real thing with Venus and Scorpio. Like that's the part of celibacy. Like it's not about like, oh, sex is bad. It's about you can gain more strength not acting on those uh, instincts, not acting on those desires. And I think if you act on those desires, you're going to get fucked. (laughs) <laughs> and not, and that's a funny thing to say after not having sex. Um, <laughs> um, it's just much more of like, you're, you're not going to have a good time. I think if you say, you know what, I'm just going to do it anyway, even though you know that you don't want to do it. We get to next week. Look at this guys. Total lunar eclipse in Taurus, Mercury Kazemi. The total lunar eclipse in Taurus is on Uranus. Mercury Kazemi is opposite Uranus. There is so much truth being revealed, which by the way, this is the midterm elections. There's going to be violence in the midterm elections. I would literally say this is going to be a violent midterm election. Like, and I don't say that lightly. I also wouldn't be surprised if, I mean, both sides are going to be like, they're stealing the election because also for all the people that are like, the Republicans are election deniers. Hillary Clinton started that, by the way. And Democrats all from 2016 to 2020 spread in misinformation that Trump somehow stole the election with Russia. We spent like six years and like millions of dollars on investigations just to find out Hillary Clinton lied. So don't be just be fucking saying, oh, election deniers or whatever. It's both fucking sides. Get apolitical, by the way. Like, stop with this fucking bullshit on both sides. But anyway, the midterms are going to be probably pretty crazy. Um, like, really crazy. Like, I would honestly... S- I don't I don't like the direction of this, but it's going to be really nuts. There's going to be a lot of truth revealed, and it's going to be really unstable. Venus is going to try Neptune. I actually like that. Like, look, Venus trines Neptune and Mercury trines Neptune. I actually really like that in terms of, like, seeing a bigger picture. But Mercury is going to square Saturn too. So there is this kind of like communication is going to be pretty harsh. It's not going to be like Mercury and Scorpio squaring Saturn and Aquarius is kind of like, for example, if you have someone being like, you need to wear a mask. And rather than being like, hey, maybe, you know, (laughs) you know, when I see people wear cloth masks, it's like trying to catch rainwater with a net. (laughs) It doesn't work. Um, And versus like Mercury and Scorpio squaring Saturn and Aquarius is like, rather than being like trying to explain to people why they're wrong, just being like, you know what? Fuck you. Like, don't fucking talk to me. <laughs> um, Mercury's Square Saturn is just going to be like, no one's, it's great. It's a great day to tell people, like, to fucking tell people off. Um, but anyway, I don't have any final thoughts. Those are my final thoughts. I think this week you guys need to get fucking real. This is a, we're in between eclipses. Shit is real. Shit is raw. And it's going to stay that way until next week. Next week is also very real and very raw. So I'm going to leave you guys off with that. I love and appreciate you guys so much. If you want to support me, consider going on to my Patreon. I do live monthly overviews of the, every month. I do rising sign horoscopes. I have exclusive content. We have a discord group. We have uh, more things that I can't think of at the moment. Early release, ad free stuff. Um, like this video if you like this video, comment for the algorithm. I love and appreciate you guys and I'll be seeing you next week.